Hi, I'm here today with Jade. Jade, uh, you're a fantastic artist. Uh, you've worked in London for almost two months, if I'm not mistaken. No, yeah, you're mistaken. How long has it been <laughs> two now? Two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my. I know. It feels like longer, to be fair. But, well, how's yeah. London been treating you so far? I really like it. I mean, I've been out, had some fun nights out and um, got a new job that I really like, you know. Mm -hmm. Hardly do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Is I'm that a positive thing or a negative thing? I mean, I'm literally sitting here doing a podcast right now and getting paid for it. Well, well I mean, I don't know. You're complaining. That's perfect. I'm not. I'm not. It's the best job I've ever had. I mean, um, you get you get paid to do a podcast. <laughs> you uh, get to do art on your yeah. time out, right? <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, you get to listen to music and just, yeah, I know. the environment. It's, it's so good. It's a good switch up from my last job because that one was just stress but um yeah and I love my flat so London's good it's expensive though I'm broke but mm. you know yeah you know it's London though <laughs> yeah exactly what can you expect well so what were your expectations when you came to London first of all kind of this to be fair not exactly this doing a podcast um well that or... was eventually going to happen sooner or later <laughs> yeah. I mean that's like in ourselves yeah. um I don't know it is I was thinking about it today because it kind of is what I expected because I moved from Cambridge and it's a very small place and um there's not really a lot of like opportunities there I wouldn't say and yeah so when I moved to London I kind of had an expectation in mind to you know be somewhere meeting loads of new people and you were born yeah. in Cambridge anywhere boring in no were you born no in no Cambridge? I was born in London you were born in London yeah but West London but West London yeah and then you moved out with your parents obviously yes. moved you out yeah to yeah to Cambridge Cambridge they wanted my brother and I to go to school there okay um it was I, mainly my dad's idea I think okay and how did that make you feel going to I hated it really <laughs> I remember because I was eight and I remember just like crying myself to sleep every night I was like I want to go back to London it and, was and what yeah. was it that you missed from London was it just your friends Kind of, yeah, but like another thing with Cambridge is it's very um snobby, yes, but also it's not very diverse in the people. So I went to a new school, I came from a school where it was like you got people from loads of different cultures, and then suddenly it's a predominantly white school with maybe like one or two black people. Not even, I don't think when I went to primary school, there was a single black person in my class. I okay. was the only mixed race person and one other person. Okay. So like, it was a big change when you're eight years old and like, you know, suddenly go from having friends with loads of different backgrounds and then it's a whole different so, environment. So, but what, what was the turning point for your parents? Because I'm assuming they must have seen something and then they were like, listen, London mm. isn't working out for our eight year old daughter. We got to get out. <laughs> no, because my brother and I, we were both really happy at our school. Like we had a lot of friends. We were doing really well, but, um, I think my dad mainly wanted to move, move and it was either Cornwall or Cambridge. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's that's quite the choice. <laughs> I know. So I, I said it was Cambridge or Cornwall because Cornwall, we had family there on my dad's side. Of course. Cambridge, we had some family friends who had lived in London that moved there and they really loved it. And yeah, and we had been to Cambridge quite a few times for this festival thing that happens there. And yeah... And I, I said Cambridge. Can't remember why, but Cornwall. Oh, so you had the choice between did, Cornwall and yeah. Cambridge. I had the choice as well of if I wanted to move or not. Okay. And, so and I said yes, because... And then you regretted the immediate decision. <laughs> yeah, because I said yes, because at this point I couldn't swim. And we were just sorry, about... Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I mean, London flooding happens, what, once a century? <laughs> where is where no. this fear? You were <laughs> so, worried of falling in the river. No, our class was just about to start our swimming lessons in PE. Okay. And so my parents come to me and they're like, do you want to move? And I was like, yes. How spontaneous are your parents? <laughs> our daughter's afraid of water. What no, are we going to do? Let's nothing, move out. It had nothing to do with it. I think this was a separate conversation they had been having. Okay. But then when they came to my brother and myself and asked if we wanted to move, I just jumped at it because I was like, yeah, I won't have to learn how to swim. But obviously <laughs> that's a requirement. <laughs> <laughs> so when I moved to Little Cambridge, did you know. <laughs> when I moved to Cambridge, you know, I had to learn how to swim. So I felt a bit cheated in this whole deal. But yeah, 
I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of gods, gobsmacked at the moment. So you went all the way to Cambridge just in order to avoid swimming. And I love that your parents gave you a choice as an eight-year-old. Hey, do you want to move or not? We'll, we'll, take, we'll take your advice on board. But I said yes, and I regretted it ever since. And I was like, well, you you're know, back now. Yeah, I know, exactly. So from the moment I left, I kind of always had this vision of coming back to London, except I wanted to be back when I was like 16. But, you know. Doesn't matter. Yeah, better late than never. I mean, you could also come here at 30. It doesn't matter. It makes yeah, a difference, honestly. Exactly. But I'm back. So, yeah, so I like it. Did you meet up with any of your former friends from grade eight or whenever, no, whatever grade you were? I, s- year old? I saw them a few times. Ta- a few, few, few times, times. <laughs> few times. <laughs> a few times after I left, but then we lost contact quite quickly. I think, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to say that on camera. Nah. You're like, I ain't gonna call no <laughs> one of it. <laughs> they were, they were nice people, um, but it's different. You know, I was a completely different person when I was eight years old. So I don't think we would have kept in contact anyway, even if for a few years after we did. I think. Yeah. I'm surprised they don't follow you on Instagram or anything else like that. Well, Instagram wasn't really a thing when we were eight. No, I agree. But now, I mean, I'm surprised no one, like, from a woodwork but from Facebook or something like, popped well, up. Well, actually, actually. Called it. Called it. <laughs> it was so random. Like, a few months ago, I got a DM from this guy and he was like, I knew it. Is your name Jade Bell? Did you go to this primary school knew it. and live in London by, by any chance? And I was like, oh my God, I've got a stalker. <laughs> I was so scared. And then another guy as well, because I think they and they're both were friends. Is. Yeah, yeah. They went to my primary school. So I haven't seen them since I was eight. And they messaged me and I was like, yeah. And then they basically found me. I think they had some sort of book where everyone's name was written and there were pictures and stuff. And yeah, so this they seems searched like up. like some creepy ass shit. Yeah, so they searched up my name. And then, because my Instagram is basically just my name. So it was easy for them to find me, but. By the way, yeah. if anyone wants to follow uh, you on Instagram, what's your uh, I- ID? Jade.bell underscore. Mm-hmm. And Bell <clears throat> is B E L L, right? Yes, yeah. Brilliant. I've heard a lot of jokes about my surname. so. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I'm sure as an eight year old, yeah. I <laughs> no, guess not so. eight. <laughs> like older. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. can anyone make fun of you if they have a name like Richard, which is synonymous <laughs> with Dick? I mean,. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess not. But I mean, there was never a Richard that made fun in of me. In Oxford, there was never a Richard. Cambridge. In Cambridge, Cambridge. sorry, there was never an, an... Not that I met, no. He was not probably in the older years. I, didn't, <laughs> maybe. I didn't They were meet probably their school. dads were called <laughs> yeah. Richard and, and, and Bob and Dave. Yeah, yeah. Dave, I met a Dave. Yeah, a dad called Dave, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Bob, we had um, a caretaker out of school called Bob. <laughs> <laughs> It feels almost like it feels like if your name has Bob, if your name is Bob, caretaker is like the number one profession. <laughs> yeah. I would imagine you'd be doing. Yeah. I, I would never assume you'd be like a doctor, an engineer, no. anything <laughs> like that. Here comes. You call yourself Robert, though. I guess. Surely. As, Wait. Uh, is a, Rob and Bob? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I, Bob. Bob does stand for something else, but I don't remember what it is. Yeah. We need to go back to Oxford. I'm sure someone there will tell us. <laughs> Cambridge. Cambridge. Sorry, I keep mistaking you the two. I wanted to be Oxford so badly. <laughs> yeah. I've never even been Oxford. So. Have you really? <laughs> no, because it seems to me to be exactly like Cambridge and I hated that. Oh, place, and you're, so. you're already in Cambridge. So you're like, exactly. Why would I? Why would I go there? And Oxford and Cambridge, you know, the universities. Rival, yeah. yeah, rivals. So. so when did you ever did you ever think while you were going through education that you'd end up in Cambridge was that ever uh, a goal in your mind where you... oh, Cambridge University yeah no I never wanted to but my family they did want me to apply of course yeah. every family wants, wants yeah to, to go <laughs> but I did not bother I think also I had missed the deadline the cutoff point to even apply by the time I considered it but no because I I've worked at one of the colleges as well I did a trial shift and it was the worst shift I've ever done at a job. It was horrible. And it was just like, I don't know, it's a different sort of people, you know. I just, no offence to anyone who's from Cambridge or Oxford University. I won't lie to you, most of our listeners are from Mexico. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I don't think you're going to be insulting anyone. I think they, <laughs> use, they use this podcast in order to practice their English. <laughs> That's my <laughs> sneaky suspicion. Maybe. <laughs> oh, but... Um, 
Okay, so so Cambridge, and then you left uh, two weeks ago. Yes. And what made you come back to London and not Paris, New York, uh, Milan? Well, university, I applied because I'm. I didn't. I never even thought about going to university outside of the UK. So. It was either for me, my well, last Well, your parents two... didn't ask you, do you want to move out in the <laughs> UK? Do you want to stay in? No, I didn't even think about it. Um, but because my plan had always been to move to London. So a lot of the universities I applied to were London based. But then it came down to the decision of either the University of Manchester or King's College. But my top choice was to be in London. So, yeah, I came to London. So is would you say that your, your need to go to be in London mm. has something to do with you feeling like you've missed out between the ages of eight and now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, because Cambridge is not really a lot going on. I feel like you don't meet as many people as you would in London. But then I don't know, because I wouldn't take back moving to Cambridge because of the people I did meet. And like, I would be a completely different person, I think, if I grew up in London. So I don't know. But also, I've got family here. So it was that as well. And I don't know, I just picture myself in London. And is do you picture yourself uh, working, raising a family? How far do you picture yourself nah. here in London? Nah. So uh, I will be in London, I think, throughout uni. Um, By I, the way, before we even go further, what mm. are you doing right now at university? What are you studying? Okay, so I'm going to be studying in English Lit. English Literature. But okay. I took a year off. So okay. I'm starting now this year. Okay. Um, at the end of September. So. And what made you choose English literature? I'm good at it. <laughs> My, I mean, that's a great choice <laughs> yeah. to study any field. Yeah, because I was also even, like, I wasn't sure I wanted to go to uni. And then I didn't know what I wanted to do if I did go. So uh, people would say, do what you're good at. If you don't know, if you don't know what you like the most, then do what you're good at. So English lit. And my teachers are in college they would all be like because I did history psychology and English lit and all of that is, is a lot of writing A-levels? yeah so that was all essay based a lot of writing and my teachers all three of them would be like the main thing you are really good at is writing like with history especially because I didn't know what I was talking about but I could just kind of if I knew a few facts I could talk about it in a way that made it seem like I knew what I was saying Do you okay, know what so I mean? you're very good at world building I guess so. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Says the English lit. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been in education now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My brain is like fried. And so are you, are you, do you think of yourself as a writer? Do you think of yourself as a reader? Do you see yourself as some sort of transcript or mm. performer or maybe? I don't know. Because uh, I like writing. I like writing a lot. Like when I was younger, I used to write a lot of fictional stories and they were just, I wrote so many. Um, so I like writing. I do like reading. Um, but I would mainly, if I did get a career in writing or anything like that, I think I'd want to do something like magazine editing or journalism, oh. something like that. Okay, that's yeah. very interesting. So you're more yeah. interested in factual uh, based when I say work? magazine editing and stuff, I mean more if it was directed towards like fashion. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you you enjoy fashion and yeah. literature. Yeah. Or if not fashion, then like there's like music journalism or something where you describe the music or something. I don't know. Music Can't bloggers, know. music yeah. writers, of course, yeah. absolutely. So, music or fashion, arts, any sort of creative thing. So that. So do you feel like you could be maybe a good interviewer? Do you feel like yeah. you could be maybe a good uh, storyteller? Like yeah. for being a writer for, for uh, <clears throat> biographies? for for. I would, you authors. know, I'd actually like to be an interviewer or um, some sort of host. Or oh, host? Yeah. Switch well, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, next week you can interview me if you yeah. like. <laughs> we'll, we'll switch seats. Yeah. I would like to do some sort of host or... You know, like a radio DJ. There are so many different, <laughs> I've bounced from so many different career options. That's why I have no idea what I want to do when I'm older because I just have a lot of different things I like or things I think I would like. So I'm just going to wait and see which career I go down. So you're actually quite talented because you're a writer, you draw, 
yeah. quite well, actually. And Thank you. I'll, I'll put your 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 uh, Instagram in the description where you post some of your artwork. Yeah. And uh, I th- you now you're a swimmer, too. Or I assume <laughs> yeah. you finally managed to swim. I can swim. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so multi- multifaceted, I imagine, yeah. Yeah, I actually did drama as well. Oh, I can do see? a bit of acting, yeah. So, I can rap as well. Oh, fantastic. Do you want to... I can't drop a beat for you here since I've got nothing to do, <laughs> no. do the sound for. Um, maybe maybe if we do another one. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll prepare a rap. You can you can just make, make a video of you rapping and I'll put it into yeah, post. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Done. Right. <laughs> Done. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I could be a rapper, <laughs> DJ, a host. It seems like you have a lot of branches on your tree, but you don't know yeah. which one you want to yeah. like, follow down on. So for me, going to uni is just a backup option it for buys all you of time. my other... Yeah. Because and you're worried can, about making a decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know which direction I want to go in yet, but then I'm also like, I'm living in London. There's so many different opportunities and, you know, I think it'll be... I'll work out which one I want to do. So when was the last time you wrote something? Uh, Like like a story mm-hmm. uh maybe in the lockdown like okay. last year and what was it called i didn't it wasn't actually a name so basically and i never finished it it was just i had kind of loosely based it off of my life like something that had happened to me like kind of recently and that was it but i never finished it and then i think i deleted it okay. it's kind of just more like an outlet you know i just write it get it all out and then delete oh that's a shame you yeah. shouldn't do that i know you should but... archive it i'm sure you can use it in the future yeah but that's if i go down that route and... what do you mean if you can always <laughs> just pump out a book in three months yeah but then i'll do something better you know so it, i mean it, to, to wait until perfection will never come yeah right so you always have to yeah. do something that that is the next step on your ladder yeah you don't seem convinced <laughs> oh, no no i see what you're saying but i feel like the last, nah, that wasn't the one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, what's the longest piece you've ever written? Oh. Pages wise. It was when I was like quite young, maybe like 11, 12. But I think it was like a couple hundred pages. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's quite, that's quite I would novel. Literally, I would add to it like every day and just be sitting at the computer typing. I think, what was it about? It was about, I think like two sisters. And it was in the middle of the war or something. I don't even know. Oh, that sounds like, interesting. They're just journey. I don't know what was really going on, but yeah, I think part of it was set in Cornwall. That's. <laughs> I mean, you've you've sold it to me. I want to read this now. Yeah. So I get I get like good ideas for books, I guess. What? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm still kind of blown away by your <laughs> your talents. <laughs> so, have, do you know who Stephen King is? Obviously, you know. Yes. So he once said that. Uh, it takes him three months mm. to finish a book mm. and he would sit down and work between three to five hours and just get about a thousand words yeah. on a page. And now he would do that every single day. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. It's finding the time as well. I, so I haven't written anything really since I was younger and I had a lot of time to do it. So it takes time. Yeah, I mean, you just that. says you just literally said that after previously saying, "Oh, I work a job that gives me a lot of time to go and follow down a lot of things <laughs> I'd like to do." <laughs> no, it's stopping you from writing five hundred words a day. Yeah, but effort. <laughs> I do want to start getting involved in more and be more driven to do one thing. It's okay. Like a person, I either I'm like a hundred percent on it, like you know, doing multiple different things at once, running around all over the place. But if I'm not then I just go back down from 100 to zero and just do nothing. Like I could stay inside in bed for like two, three days straight. And then what happens after the third day? Then I'll end up like being on it. Yeah. Doing loads of stuff. And then, yeah, I just go recuperate. Like, you know, (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) You have a really interesting (laughs) life life stance. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I I have the same thing, but for me, it's with video games. If, oh right! If I play something, yeah, I have to finish it within three days. The moment the third day hits, <laughs> I can't touch it again. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've wasted too much time on it. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to ever touch that thing ever again. And then I don't touch a video game for like maybe six months. 
And then you do the same thing. And then I do like one thing, then it's for three days. Yeah. And then immediately after the third day hits, whether it's finished or not, I'm like, I am done with this. Yeah. Been yeah. It. Done. <laughs> no, it's the same. That happens. I, I had a real issue. Like, you know how I said I, I never really finished a story. I have issues finishing drawings as well. Like I have a lot of unfinished drawings. Like, I don't know. I just start things and then I find it very hard to finish because I get bored of it. Have you ever considered trying to trying to start with the finish hmm? so like, imagine you're writing a book yeah i was starting with the ending starting with the ending yeah so then, then you're just working out how to get to that path but you can't do that with the drawing i well i assume not but if you have an idea of what that portrait is in your head the moment you hit that image then that's it yeah i don't know though with drawing i think is different because it never fully ends up exactly how i initially I don't really have a straightforward like mm, what's the word mm. <laughs> I, I'm not in your brain so I can't I don't, help you <laughs> I don't have, you don't like have a, a vision yeah there we I go. don't have a specific vision for how I want it to go so because sometimes I end up adding paint to it or I don't know pen you know and it it changes so so uh, I don't know if you know who Woody Allen is He's a, the name sounds familiar. He's a famous uh, director, really famous writer. He right. wrote some really, really great books. And mm. one of the things he, he mentions is that in his books, he sometimes spends years on just every single little sentence and syllable yeah. until it sounds absolutely perfect. Yeah. And he's, he's made about three or four books now, mm. and he's made about maybe 20 something films. And he, wow. and he would talk about what the difference between those two. Uh, entities are mm. and he said that with the films there's a deadline yeah and the moment that deadline hits i can't touch it again yeah yeah but a book you but just a, kind of it goes on forever going going and going and that's why he also tell he also will say that if if he had to pick between two mediums which one is his most refined work the purest work the books it's always the books yeah yeah and so maybe that would help you just have like a deadline be like it needs to be done this day yeah. and then that's it. I mean when I do have a deadline I can make it happen. If I'm doing a drawing for someone else then I can do it in within a few days. So the like problem that. is that you need a deadline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's when it's for me and I'm like this is only for me I'm going to do it in my own time then when I feel like it because otherwise it kind of feels like a chore. And that's why I didn't want to do art oh, at uni. Oh that's so interesting. Yeah. Because then if I'm not in the mood, then I don't want to pick up a pen. Because as well... You really are an artist. <laughs> you really are an artist. It's amazing. It's, the thing is as well, like drawing, it kind of, <clears throat> it makes you think a lot because all I'm doing is just sitting there. I don't think about what I'm doing. It's mm -hmm. kind of a subconscious thing what I do. But then, you know, so I'll be thinking about a lot of other things. And then when I don't have the energy to be thinking and in my head a lot, then I just... I can't draw. So what do you do then when you don't have a lot of energy? Do you watch <clears throat> something? Do you listen to something? Yeah, I'll normally watch something. Oh, wh what What do you Maybe. prefer watching? Oh. <laughs> Go on, be honest. I, I re-watch the same like, TV shows. I think, so. I think you are a perfect <laughs> example of everyone else in, <laughs> in the world. But I don't really watch anything new. Okay, so what do you keep re-watching then? Friends, when I have absolutely nothing else to watch. Um... Gossip Girl. Okay. <laughs> I rewatched like five times. I could recite the lines with that. <laughs> oh, wow. That's impressive. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I'm rewatching Power. Okay. Have you heard of it? No. It's about this uh, drug dealer in New York. And yeah, he basically is trying to get out of the drug game, ends up cheating on his wife with his high school sweetheart, and then everyone wants to kill him, and it's all a big thing. But I never really understand what's going on in it. <laughs> <laughs> but you keep rewatching it. It's good. But I don't really, I don't understand the drug talk, all of their business stuff. Like okay. the distro and then you know the I like how you're also so lazy that you just don't pause it, look it up on Google. <laughs> Let me like, oh right, that's what well, that means. I know the distro is Ghost and Tommy, which okay. is, Ghost is the main character. Okay. But then there's, you know, all the other people. And it's like, how many people have you got involved? I don't understand. It's, I can't it's, do that, by the way. I can't, like Games of Thrones, I literally couldn't follow that show because I'm so bad yeah. at remembering characters' yeah, names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just That's really terrible at that. Yeah. 
So Power is a bit, that's also a bit of a draining show because it's very dark and everyone's just dying one by one. But yes, I'm watching that right now. Orange is the New Black. Have you heard of that? Yes, I have. Mm. Have you seen it? Uh, not by choice. Uh, I love that show. I've I've been forced to watch one or two episodes. It's so and I was good. Like, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> no. um, 90210. I just, I like a lot of basic. And movies, I like a lot of like chick flicks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And action. Okay. I like kind of action movies, like superhero movies. I love movies about, you know, like duos, the two undercover police officers or something like that. FBI agents, like bad boys, 21 so like, Jump Street. You like uh, uh, cop dramas, that kind of stuff. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So let me ask you, have you ever watched Godfather? No. Oh my God. But I think that's because my mum would always talk about it and she kind of drives me a bit nuts when she's really insistent on someone watching something. I okay. Just, and yeah, so I have not seen it, but I've obviously heard a lot about it. So... Um, there are so many stories behind The Godfather and how mm. it's meant to be this as a cinematic piece. Mm. It's it's like proclaimed as one of the greatest movies ever filmed on, on tape. Yeah. Uh, I know this one filmmaker. His name is uh, Casey. He's mm. a YouTube guy. Maybe you've seen him. Maybe you haven't. He would play that movie as a screensaver throughout this whole day on his computer. What? what how? So he downloaded an application for his Mac yeah. and he would input that film as a screensaver and that film was playing on the background on mute the whole day, every day. Oh my God. That's how much he <laughs> loved that film. And he, he was like, it is the most perfect <clears throat> film ever. And if I could just understand 1% of this like <laughs> fantastic thing, I will be infinitely better as a movie maker. Oh, I... That's to me amazing. To be so in love yeah, with like one piece. Yeah, make it your screensaver. Yeah. It's mad. I'll include it in the link if I'm not if I'm not lazy, and <laughs> not I'll show me. it to you later <laughs> yeah. if you like. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you've moved here from <clears throat> from London. Uh, you want to open a club? Yeah, in Miami. In Miami. Miami specifically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the big goal. Which kind of I don't know if I got the idea from Power. Okay. <laughs> because this big drug dealer basically sells drugs until he has enough money to open up his club in New York. But obviously I'm not trying to be a drug dealer up until I get the money to open a club. But I don't know. It just seemed really cool opening a club, having that as your main goal. And I was like, I want to do that. But it did stem off of as well wanting to be a DJ. But I don't know anything about DJing. So I thought, why be a DJ when I could just own a club? Okay, the, the, <laughs> the person I see in front of me, I see as like an actress. Right. That's what I see. I think you would be really good. Acting. Acting. Mm. And I don't know if you'd be good in theater or if you'd be good on TV or on film. Yeah. But I, I feel like that I, is what you're really good it's at. It's hard to get into, though. That's like, not. And be successful and make a lot of money from it. Yeah, but there's you still make a lot of money as... as you don't have to be at the biggest star in the world. You don't have to be yeah. Tom Cruise. Even second place <laughs> makes a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. either everything or nothing. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think I need to kind of make a decision and go for whatever that is because I don't know. How do you even get into acting? Well, you <laughs> go and you look online to find... Uh, um, so, uh, no, what's it the, called? Um, an no, auction auction school? No, no, not auction housing. Uh, it's called... Auditions? Thank you. You mm. go online... And you find auditions. Yeah. And then you just show up. And then right. once you make a little bit of money, then you go talk to an agent who will we'll then go and promote you. Right. Yeah. I mean, acting as well is one of my options. My, <laughs> <laughs> my drama teacher, I saw her recently and she was like, so, oh, Jade, you're always one of those people I just could give any role to and you could just do it. And I was like, oh. Thank you. She she really wants See, me you to even, be... See, you even answered it like an actress, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> she really wants me to get into acting. And I, I think you'd be really talented at it. And you can still yeah. own a, a club even as an actress. In fact, arguably, you, your club will be more <laughs> successful. That's true. The goal is just to open a club. How I get there, there's different options. So maybe acting. But you don't want to be tied down to anything at the moment. At the moment, no. I've given myself a few years to kind of 
make a decision. And then even after uni, I think <clears throat> I'm going to go traveling for like a year. So why don't you do things that are like benefit to your hobby? Like what? Like going to art classes, like going to theater classes, anything that brings you joy, writing classes, whatever. And yeah. a lot of them are free, by the way, in London. Are they? Mm -hmm. I haven't really looked into it, is the answer. I just haven't really thought about it. But maybe I should. I mean, you can always just watch Friends, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sit on my sofa for three days straight. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah. I think I'll, I'll look into it. I will. So what would you say is the one thing that brings you happiness? I want to say food, but... <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. That was just the first thing that came to my head. When I eat, I'm really happy, so... Um, Do you like cooking? Sometimes. Yeah, I mean... I don't mind cooking, but often, like, I wait so long because I procrastinate until it gets to the point where I'm starving and then I just want to throw pizza in the oven. Impressive. But I do cook. I have to cook because I live alone now. So I oh, do okay. cook. Yeah. So how is it living alone? I love it. This is the first time you've lived alone? Yeah. I mean, I live properly. with my friend, but she's, we're kind of always back and forth from Cambridge at the moment. I've kind of stopped that now. Um, but yeah. So, but yeah, so sometimes I'm alone, but I do love it. So, so you work here two days a week mm -hmm. and for the remaining five days, you well, are up in uni? No, so oh, not, yet. not yet. But up until this week, I was also working in Cambridge doing two, three days. Okay. So I was still kind of working full time. So, and then those two days I had off would normally be spent traveling back from Cambridge or. I mean, how far is yeah. Cambridge? Like an hour by train? It's very close. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, <laughs> you make it sound like. <laughs> the traveling takes up the whole day because I can't really fit much else into my day when I'm you know commuting god forbid <laughs> <laughs> it's too much it's too much i get it makes me very tired as well being on a train makes me sleepy so not really much else i want to do what would you say is your spirit animal i've read that it's a bear you've read that it was a bear yeah and what do you feel it is a sloth a sloth. <laughs> nah, maybe they're a bit too lazy. Um, There's nothing wrong with being lazy. I don't know so much about animals to know all of their characteristics. Do you know what I mean? I'm just asking you just a general question of what you feel. But I want to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a right answer. I want to... Uh, I'll say a bear. I'll stick with a bear. You think a bear? Yeah. Hmm. Because I feel like they can be kind of slow. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, like if... They're also very loving. Yeah, are they? Yeah. <laughs> Cuddly. <laughs> but then they can be like really scary. They're very protective of their cubs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's your answer. Huh? <laughs> I don't... Yeah. I mean, I would say the way... Because, you know, like bears can suddenly just be like... Rawr. <laughs> do that again what can they be right right um, people say to me I'm like i'm gonna keep that in the editing by the way 100 <laughs> people do say to me like when i get angry and i don't get angry often so i feel like like a bear you know i'll be quite calm but then if i get angry then it's like rawr, oh no it goes loose <laughs> people say i can be really scary when i'm angry at Right. Who, who are these people who say my that? My friends. <laughs> I'm sorry, how many friends do you have here in London since you only moved here two weeks ago? Yeah, but I'm still friends with my friends in Cambridge. Oh, okay. So in London, like, the people I've met, I haven't really replied to any messages. <laughs> okay. So we're not doing, yeah, no one really in London at the moment, but I do know people in London um, from before I moved. And, but yeah, I've got friends in Cambridge. So for some of the people who are considering maybe moving into London, mm. you've now been officially here for two weeks. Yes. Could you give an insight to somebody who's thinking about moving here? Yeah, you've got to have a lot of money. Okay. What would you say is a good budget to start with? A couple thousand. Okay. If your lifestyle is like mine, though. 
because okay. some people I know they don't spend a lot of money okay on things like going out to eat and going to bars okay and going clubbing okay and these three and things that you do yes but I mean clubs should be for free for girls no what no what places are you going to I've been to quite a few different places. Like, I've been to some higher-end ones and... Lower-end ones? Yeah. And, and they're requiring entry for women? Yeah. That's very... I mean, you're not going with a promoter. That's your problem, I think. I've... No, okay, so when I have been with a promoter, then I get in free. And you should be able to get your drinks <clears throat> free, too. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. But... Okay, so when I go to the lower ones, without a promoter, i got to pay entry... And then they also want you to pay for drinks, but I, I kind of finesse the drinks yeah, on sure. other people. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. You just <laughs> seem some some schmuck in the corner, yeah. give him a little wink. <laughs> Before you know it, he, he's a hundred quid in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> he's going so, on with dick. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't actually end up spending a lot of money when I go clubbing. Okay, and you don't spend a lot of money on drinks because you're fleecing it. So yeah. where, where's the expenditure? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Going out to eat and still bars are expensive, you know, like going out for cocktails. But, but why aren't you just doing dates and then you get free lunches? Oh, just like wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> what? Lunch is a lunch, isn't it? Yeah, but going on a date, I'd rather go with my friends than, you know, go out just to get a free meal and free drinks. From some guy that I don't really have any interest in talking to. Okay, then maybe find a guy who we have interest in talking to. <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> that doesn't come around easily in... What? In London? Are you kidding? Ha. Ah. Ah. Nah. I just... Also, we're going back to the laziness. Mm -hmm. so, but you're not lazy to go out to eat with your friends. Yeah, no, because I know them. But I... you don't know any friends currently in London. Except my friend I live with. But you just mentioned that half the time they're not in. We now nah, we still do stuff. The thing is, right now it's been a bit all over the place because we're right now it. you've only been here two weeks. Exactly. So how? Where are these friends gonna magically appear from two weeks? <laughs> You're the one who's saying I like going out eating with my friends. <laughs> yeah, but my friends from Cambridge come. Oh, so they do come to London. Yeah, okay, this yeah. is new piece they of come, information. No, nah, so my friends come to London quite often. This, we would do that anyway when I lived in Cambridge. Okay, first let's roll back a little bit. Uh, so your advice on people who are thinking about moving to London is they needed a lot of money. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, um, what about finding an apartment? How did you do that? Okay, so we found it really quickly, to be honest. So you and your friend both looked for one at the same time? Well, we were meant to go into student accommodation, but mm -hmm. I didn't want to. And it was £300 a week for the one that I had got. Because at the time, I kind of, I didn't really think about the money. Do you Can you mention the name, if you don't mind? If I can remember it. It's on Garden. Okay, then it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't mention the name. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was expensive. It, it, was, it was nice looking, but then I kind of thought, I don't want to share a bathroom. I don't want to share a kitchen. I'd be stuck in my room, like, most of the time. I mean, I paid three fifty, and I had a sh single bed, single bathroom, single everything. A week. Yeah. Wow. Don't I? I mean, yeah. how much are you paying for rent in the moment? Less than what I would be. Okay, so how much are you paying right now? Right now, so it'd be about 900 each a month. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. Yeah. So that's less than what I would have been paying myself if I went into this accommodation. But uh, do you have electri do you have <coughs> electricity, water, internet included? That would be... No, nah, it's not included, but I've mm -hmm. included that in the price I just gave you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So it's really not that bad. And... Yeah, I have my maintenance loan. I'm working. So it's about so, what, two twenty five a week? Three nine five a week. Oh, because yeah, it's divided differently in the yeah. UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right. Because it's multiplied by something like fifty two or yeah, fifty three yeah, or something like that. Yeah, and then they like divide that. it by yeah, yeah, yeah. something else. I'm not good at maths. Yeah, it's they do they do have a weird system here in the UK. So whatever number you think it is. Per, per week, what they give you is not the same number as what's going, going to be per, be month. per month. Yeah. It's, it's, they do this weird system to it. Yeah. Um, what else? I was, but yeah, so finding a flat, it was kind of easy, but we were really worried about being scammed because I think there are a lot of scammers that kind of promise you a place and then they ask for a deposit and then you never get it. But yeah, so that was the only thing we were worried about. 
But literally, we found this place in, I think, two weeks. And of... it's 900 pounds per person or 900 pounds for the whole apartment? Well, for th no, no, no. So for the whole flat, it would be about 1,800. There we go. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense then. Yeah. And then divide that. So I By will two. be paying less than what I would have been paying sure. for the accommodation. Sure. Um, but yeah, we found this place, I think, within about two weeks of deciding we wanted to move in together. So yeah, it was very quick. And how did you find her? How did you find her? How did you find the place? Um, did you just, on, do you have I a website think, like, or something? Right move or Zoopla. Okay. So, yeah, we just searched up two bedroom flats in London, two bedroom, two bathroom. Um, and did you go see it before you signed any yeah, papers? Yeah, so we saw it. We went down to London to come see it. And then the next day, or even the same day, we put the deposit down, the holding deposit down. And that basically meant that they couldn't show it to anyone else. And yeah, so it all happened very quickly. And then a month later, we moved in. Okay. Yeah. So for somebody who's considering moving into the UK, mm. be prepared that your 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 apartment is going to cost one eight if you're moving in totally alone. Yeah. Nine hundred if you can find a roommate yeah. to move with you. How easy or difficult is it to find employment here? Well, I got this job before I even moved. Okay. So and before I even got this job, I already had another job that I was going to move to come and do here anyway so I found getting a job quite easy but I've heard from other people that it can be quite hard especially if you are a uni student and you're looking for a job around September they all I think just get kind of snatched up by uni students so it's a lot harder then and uh, how did you find the ploy how do you find the last two jobs you've uh, applied for uh, okay so the first one was going to be in a bar and um, I was gonna you sure, oh, sure but how did you find oh, how did I find them on indeed Okay, so you yeah. went just through Indeed, and yeah. any recommendations on people who might consider of, of going on to Indeed to find a job? Do you post a picture with mm. your CV, or do you do anything like that? No, I, lit I literally just have my CV. I don't even normally write a cover letter or anything like that. Um, sometimes they'll require it. Sometimes they require you to fill out a questionnaire, but I didn't have to do that for either of these. So. And how was the interview process? Did you have to come in person or could you do it on Zoom or some other video service? But this place, I did it on Zoom because I had COVID. I was okay. literally, I had to roll out of bed, just put on some makeup really quickly. And then it was on Zoom. <laughs> Wearing my pajama top that I hadn't changed out of for like two days because I literally couldn't move from my bed. So I literally, yeah, rolled out, had my interview. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> And then done. And then I had a second interview with the CEO of this place. And if you don't mind me asking, how mm. many how many uh, uh, applications did you send in, in Indeed, until you found your two placements? To be fair, I think quite a few. Okay. I don't know, maybe five, six. And I heard back from, yeah, two, three. I heard back from three. And what was the deciding factor for you? Was it just the distance to your apartment, uh, just the salary, benefits? Mm. So with the other place compared to here, I'd be finishing at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. The tubes, I think, stopped running way before then. So Depends I was on the tubes. Yeah. So I was kind of a bit like, how am I going to get home? And also it would be a bar. And the job that I originally applied for there, which was going to be hosting, um, got taken like a few hours before I got there for the interview. Oh my. Yeah. So I went all the way there and he was like, oh, that job's gone. So <laughs> take care. <laughs> I was, but then I was like, right, I've come all this way. What else do you have? And so I was going to be a waitress and then work my way up to bartending. But I kind of didn't want to do that. Work. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I accepted that job because I got offered it right then and there at the interview, even though during the interview, I was kind of sitting there like, I'm not so sure I want this job. But then he asked me and I was like, yeah. Um, and then a couple of days later, I got a phone call from this place. And the hours are just a lot better. So do you mind me asking, how, how long did it take you between the date that you decided you wanted a job in London and the day you got your first interview? Well, was it like a week, two weeks, a month? What, what, were you, what kind of time frame were you talking about? It was very quick. Well, I all, I always knew I would want a job when I moved here for uni anyway. But I didn't apply to jobs until we saw the first flat that we were considering moving into. And that was about... So I think I applied and within about two, three days, I got offered the first job in the bar. 
Okay. And then maybe about one or two weeks later, I got offered this one. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, so again, I'm, I'm in my head, I'm just constantly thinking about that person who's, you know, considering coming to London the first time. Yeah. Especially if they're a student and maybe looking for work. I think you've got to try and find a job before you move. Okay. And it's a bit risky coming here without a job. But my friend didn't have a job when we moved and then she really quickly got like two, three options. So now she's working in a nice job. And, and let me ask you something else. How safe do you feel walking around? It's surprising because I actually feel safer walking around London than I did in Cambridge. More people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the whole reason we moved to Cambridge was because it was meant to be a safer place to grow up. But okay. I always thought differently because I would still come to London like every other weekend to come see my sister. And I was always thinking it feels so much safer walking around London than it does in Cambridge. And even when I've been back recently to Cambridge from London, I got off the train and I was walking to my house and I got beeped at by two cars, literally right one after the other and then shouted at by the men in the cars. What were they telling you? I, I had my AirPods in, oh, so okay. I, I couldn't hear, but it was, you know. Um, this wasn't in, in uh, This was in Cambridge. In Cambridge, yeah. Yeah, and I was thinking when I was in London... People don't have just, time to beep at yeah, you in London, yeah. to be honest. It's I mean, like, bicyclists don't even ring when they're fucking <laughs> yeah. zooming past you. I was like, this just doesn't really happen. And I said the same, I said it to my friend. And then when she went back to Cambridge from here, she was like, oh my God, Jade, you're so right. The, it's so creepy in Cambridge. The people here are so creepy. You don't feel really safe and it's so quiet. And Well, this is the thing I hear from some of my friends. They say, oh, you know, they get whistled at by builders. Mm. And, I, and I constantly think like, who the fuck is whistling at you? <laughs> <laughs> He's whistling at your, your fucking fat friend. ass. Are you crazy? <laughs> Why are you lying? No one's going to believe this. <laughs> no, the construction people are like that. Builders. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard a builder whistle in my life. And I've lived here really? 10 years. No way. Have you Have you heard one build, builder whistling? Yes. Here in London? No. Well, you've also only been here two weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> but I've heard many builders whistling. <laughs> And like, yeah, like how, like how, like how whistling at you though, not just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean just them going about the day whistling. <laughs> no, I, and I that's mean, my image still, you know, like 1940s <laughs> with a bobby like, <laughs> stuck in bricks. <laughs> that's that's the that's the image I still have no. <laughs> of a simpler time. <laughs> yeah. What what is the biggest spending other than rent? Yeah, drinking is expensive. Well, it depends on where you... I mean, this is, again, you're going with promoters. You should be getting your drinks for free. I know. But I only know one promoter, and he's normally based in one club. Okay. Which I don't Wait always want to go to. Wait till starts, and then you're going to be swarmed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then everything is going to be all those club nights and stuff. If you want my advice, mm. this is what I got told some Swedish girls uh, uh, who had, like, blonde hair and all that. Mm. And they were telling me that in three years in living in London, they have never paid for their own drink. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... So maybe going blonde is the secret of, <laughs> of saving your, your your wallet. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Because I... My friends, they don't really ever get free drinks. They don't really do anything to try and get free drinks. They never fleece anyone, do they? No, yeah. Give a little wink, <laughs> they cheeky rely, smile. They rely on me for that. <laughs> rely on you? Do you mind buying my whole group of six girls drinks? Oi, oi. <laughs> uh, like, Comes in with a billionaire walk. <laughs> when I went out with my friend that I lived with a couple weeks ago, I was trying to teach her how to do it. Okay. Because I have little... What's your technique? Go on, tell oh, us. Okay, okay so... How do I start it off? First of all, you've got... Let, let's a, I pretend. Let's pretend, right? I'm sitting here in the club having a drinks. But first of all, I've got to say, you've got to try and distinguish between those that are actually going to pay for your drinks and those that are going to say they're going to pay for your drinks and then they're not and they're just going to keep you How would you there. distinguish it that? There's a vibe. You can just kind okay. of tell. And... What do you want? Do you look at the watches? Do you look at the yeah, shoes? Yeah, you look at shoes. You look at how they're dressed. Okay. Their whole vibe. You can kind of just tell. And how do you know if they're not fake rich? 
See that again, you can just tell, you can tell when someone has one nice outfit and they rewear it over and over again, mm-hmm. just by how they, you know, make themselves seem. Okay. How their vibe they put out. I can't explain it. Okay. I can just kind of tell and I'm normally very good at telling. Because, okay. Yeah. People can see how I look like. What kind of vibe am I giving you? I think you would buy a drink. Okay. I think you would. Um, My friend once described me that I will either be uh, uh, poor and crazy or rich and a bit weird. (laughs) (laughs) I try to walk that line every day of my life. Yeah. I think, I think if I saw you, I'd be like, yeah. That guy is broke. (laughs) That's how you're going to look at me. That's the the vibe I'm trying to give out. (laughs) No, but you know what? Some of the richest people will look like they don't have a lot of money. There's a reason why I try to look the way I do. <laughs> exactly. So, you know. But I don't understand how homeless people still come up and ask me for money. And I wear like shorts and hoodies and I try oh, they to. Ask, they like, ask everyone for money. No, 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 <laughs> no. I, I'll sit in a pub yeah. like outside and there's 30 other people. And for some reason, three homeless guys will walk like I'm in the middle table. Like you actually yeah. have to walk towards me. And they'll just like, I'm just having a chat. No. Oi, oi, do you have a quid, mate? <laughs> what the fuck? I think you do kind of have a kind of wealthy Weird vibe. vibe. Yeah? Yeah. You what got, is it? I don't know. You've got the Apple Watch on. You st- okay. You're still wearing a Nike tech fleece. Okay. And you're wearing it in a way where you're not trying to prove you're wearing a Nike tech fleece. Whereas some guys, they go out, they've got their matching Nike okay. tech fleece. A lot of Indians will Air do Force. that. They'll have like those like 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 and polo shirts with the, like the polo, the ho- horse. Ralph Lauren. Yeah, Ralph yeah. Lauren. And they'll have it like, it's like as big in a as massive this shirt. Logo. Yeah. And the richest Ugh. people, they have next to no logo. Like it will be so small if they have one or, you know, it'll just be on the label. Like my sister, she's got quite a lot of money and I've noticed all her clothes are designer, but you would not be able to tell mm-hmm. because there's no logo on it. So. Okay. So you, you assess what they're wearing. You look yes, at their watches, yes. their shoes. And age as well. Okay. Anyone who seems my age. Forget it. Nah, yeah. Okay. They're not gonna buy you anything. All right. Um, so you gotta go for older. So what is a good age gap? What are you looking so, for? Thirty five, twenty eight, twenty nine. Where, where are we at? I think. Forty. No, 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 no. You can go lower than that. Okay. I would say, easiest is from twenty five upwards. Okay. No limit as to. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How old? <laughs> the older, I think, the more money they're willing to spend. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> they'll be more happy with your company, you know? Really? I'm I not sure so. about that. Okay. I think so. Also, you've got to go with how... <laughs> Maybe how desperate they seem. Okay. Because the more desperate they are, the more likely they're willing to yeah. spend money. And how do you tell if someone's desperate? They just see you coming up and they'll be like, hi! Well, yeah, because they'll approach you. Okay. And... You will just be able to... I don't think I've ever approached a girl in a club. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Honestly, I don't think I've ever done in my entire life. In a bar either? Nah. Yeah, well, it's not going to work on everyone. Sometimes, you know, a girl's going to have to approach you. But (laughs) I don't don't approach anyone. So the thing, the way I see it, I'm like, if a guy is approaching me, he's got to pay for my time. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Okay, go on. (laughs) Like, because I'm I'm there with my (laughs) friends. If I'm there with my friends and I'm enjoying myself. Mm-hmm. I'm, but you'd enjoy yourself more if there was a drink in your hand. Yes, okay. but normally I, I will buy my own drink to start myself off. Oh, of course. And make it seem as well. You've got to make it seem yourself like you don't need them to buy you a drink. Sure, sure. You've got the money and you've got, yeah. you're independent <laughs> and you can buy your own drink. <laughs> I'm selling all my secrets now. <laughs> what secrets? <laughs> My tactics. Your tactics. <laughs> yeah. Your two week tactics. <laughs> so you gotta seem like you have money. Okay. And you don't need them to buy you a drink. But then when you they start engaging in conversation, be friendly. Like, oh yeah, my name's Jade. Um I just moved here or whatever. And then and then at some point when the conversation starts getting a bit like sexy and whatnot. No, no. It's <laughs> just like they're chatting away a bit more. Then you gotta uh. be like do you want to buy me a drink? You know, like, we're going to keep this conversation going. <laughs> okay, you you really go out front with it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I just, I ask for it. Or I say, buy me a drink. Oh, wow. And it, you're successful with that. Yeah, it doesn't not work. That is amazing to me. <laughs> but then my friend joined because I told her, I just, I asked them to buy me a drink. <clears throat> and she was like, Jade, I tried yours. 
<laughs> the guy shut her down immediately. And then I said, well, how did you go about it? And she was like, I don't know. He was just like standing next to me at the bar and I asked him if he wants to buy me a drink. And I was like, "Yep, that is the worst way to do it. Like you can't just stand there. Imagine. <laughs> just a stranger your- just coming up to you. <laughs> And also buy not interesting to you in you at all as well. So buy me a drink. Of course they're gonna say no. You gotta work your way around it and do it in a subtle way, you know. Mm. Oi oi love. <laughs> my my, my hand yeah, my hand is empty here. <laughs> Need a refill, please. No, so I'll just be like, Do you wanna buy me a drink? Like we're gonna keep this conversation going. Maybe touch that arm a little bit. Okay. And then normally they'll be like, yeah. Okay. Because you got to work out who the right ones are first. Okay. And then, yeah. And so what happens after that drink transaction? You kind of like disappear in the crowd and you go, oh, hey, you know, my friends just need to talk to me or something. (laughs) And then when that drink finishes, you go straight back and be like, sorry. No, then I move on to the next. Oh, okay. (laughs) Okay. So you're a serial uh, drinkist. (laughs) When I was like 17 and going clubbing, I would literally hardly ever be with my friends in the club. I would just be at the bar. <laughs> Different and where where did you get this technique from? From your sister? Not nah, from myself. I don't know where it came from. You just maybe watched it on TV or I something. I think what it was. I think he would offer to buy me a drink, oh. and then I would get used to that. Okay. And then I'd be like, "So why am I buying myself a drink now?" Okay. So <laughs> so the technique is right. So everyone's understood it so far. You kind of look. You 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 zone out your target, right? <laughs> yeah your victim and then you, <laughs> you make a little small talk you know you compliment yeah. them on something you know they think yeah. they have a chance they start opening up a little bit and then you just flat out drop it hey you know <laughs> i need a drink yeah be like buy me a drink buy me a drink and normally at this point anyway i'm so drunk it doesn't matter to me even if they said no which is very rare i'll be like okay bye i leave you're not i'm not giving you my time then if you're not gonna pay <laughs> Why would I waste my energy on this? So, you know. Okay. Move on to the next. Okay. No, not even move on to the next. Go back to my business. Wait for the next schmuck to come along. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) And then we repeat. (laughs) It's, yeah. I'll buy you a drink after the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Since since you've been so clear. (laughs) And the thing is, so any, anyone I say this to, they're always like, nah, I'd never buy you a drink when we're out. If I saw, I would never buy a drink, a, a, buy a girl a drink. And I'm like... I'd probably will. I'd feel think, pressured into a situation. <laughs> That's yeah. how that would happen. You know, if, someone, if a girl was coming up to you, like, buy me a drink. You're going to say no if you're broke. That is very true. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, for, for I would just say yes, because I just, <laughs> I feel so pressured in that situation. I'd be like, I want to get rid of the situation. What do you want? Whatever you want. Just have it. Go. Exactly. So... I don't know. There's no way it can go wrong. If a guy says no, that's it. Yeah. His loss. Exactly. Yeah. You, you lost a five minute conversation <laughs> with me. <laughs> so, you know, I'll maybe give you my Snapchat and then never add you back. Hey. You missed out on that. <laughs> so so what, what what are ways that, that guys uh, ask you? Do they ask you for your number? Do they ask you for your Insta, for your Snap? Yeah. Uh, often it's my number but I hate giving my number out to random people okay because you know like I end up getting random phone calls in the middle of the night and I'm like who is this who the fuck does that exactly so when I went out recently with my friend and when I was teaching her my tricks um (laughs) there were I think I added some people back on snapchat because they asked for my snapchat and they were like oh you're not gonna add me back and I was like I will, no, you know, so I had to do it in front of them. Okay. I wake up the That's next another day technique like, for your guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, After do that it that now. Transaction. I was like, all right, okay. So I did it. I wake up the next day and I'm like, who the hell? It's like E1. Because a lot of these London guys have weird usernames as well. So I'm like, I don't even know what their names are. And then, so I never replied to any message because I was like, I don't know who this person is. I remember adding them back because they made me. And yeah, that's it. But then he ends up calling me on Snapchat multiple times. Like, who does that? When you don't know someone, why are you calling them like that? On Snapchat as well, it's just, it's weird. So I don't like to hand out anything really, except Instagram. So Instagram is better than Snapchat? Yeah, for me, if people ask for my Snapchat, normally I will give it to them and not add them back. Okay. Um, Instagram, I'll be like, 
I don't really give out my number, but you can take my Instagram. It, do you do you see this with like older guys or with younger guys? Because I feel like younger guys would use Snapchat more than older guys, but it might just be my fucked yeah. Up younger brain. guys are normally like, "What's your Snapchat?" Really? Okay. And older guys are normally like, "What's your number?" or "What's your Instagram?" Okay. Normally, what's your number? I wouldn't ask a girl for a number because I feel like it would make her almost uncomfortable. Yeah, it it makes me uncomfortable. I'm like, I don't want you to have my number. Mm. It just, it feels, because then they could be texting you, calling you, FaceTime you. It's a bit much. I, I had, I was a little drunk at a bar and I forgot the name of the bar. Mm. And uh, I saw the waitress and I was like, oh, she's pretty cute. I'll mm. ask for a number. Mm. And I think I just hit that that line between tipsy and drunk. Yeah. If, the, if, you, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so all my self-esteem just disappeared. Yeah. And so I was like, hey, you know what? Uh, you seem pretty fun. Um, what's your number? And then she was like, oh, my number is just as she was about to like reply. Yeah. I said, because I had no self-esteem. <laughs> I said, oh, in case I want to book a table or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> she looked she, she looked so destroyed. Oh, <laughs> my God. She, she just went, oh, uh, if that's the case, I'll give you the manager's number. <laughs> yeah. So you never even got a number. <laughs> you just ruined it for yourself. Exactly. And I didn't want to go back. I just, I found the story so perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but I just said, that's it. <laughs> I'm keeping that. Brilliant, no? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> I guess so. You could have ended up married by now, but you know. I think that's much better. You never know. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's you way better. You got a funny better. story. That's better. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> For the good yeah. twenty minutes of when I was when I was finishing my drink, I was just in tears laughing. <laughs> Brilliant. The poor girl. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> she'll she'll find some other schmuck. It's all right. I ain't worried. Yeah. So yeah. So what, my... what was the most embarrassing way a guy asked you for a number? Like oh. waiting for you outside the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know. Um, or were you ever worried like, like, wait, this dude is asking for my number? Like he was like, no, I'm not paying your drink. What's your number, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I, I don't think I can remember. The only, I can't remember an embarrassing story where someone's asked for my number. Um, but I mean, one time there was this guy where I used to work. And um, and he asked me for my number because I, I basically was a hostess. So I worked at the front and I would just seat people to tables. And I sat him at his table and he was on his own. And then I spoke to him about the desserts for like a bit because he was asking which ones were good. And I used to make the desserts. But um, that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> so um, and then I think I was going downstairs because it was a hotel and he came down and he was like, oh, what's your number? And stuff. So. I gave him my number because I was I was like, I don't really give my number out. But I was in the middle of doing something like I was carrying a tray and it was really inconvenient timing. And so and he would he was being really persistent. So I just gave it to him and then I did whatever I was going to do, came back. He was in the same place, which was on like one of the floors in a lift. And he was still halfway blocking the lift from shutting, getting another girl's number. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> And I just, I just like walked past like, right, okay. And I never heard from him again. I think he was like, right, this, <laughs> that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was in a house party once in this for one reason or another. Oh no, it was my birthday party. And for one reason or another, we invited one of the neighbors that were here in the mm. bar drinking down. Yeah. And he was like 45 or something like that, but mm. alone. Like, you know, like a graying fox. That's yeah. That's how we call yeah. it, right? <laughs> I said like, fuck it. We'll just invite him. And then he spent the whole night just going up to every girl in the party oh, God. and saying, hey, do you want to have a fuck? <gasps> just straight no up, way. just straight up, just straight up. And oh. he was he was like 45, maybe 50. And the next day I saw him with his wife and kids. <gasps> <laughs> no. Oh, my God. I was blown away. I just looked at him. He looked no at me way. and just winked. <laughs> I hate men. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't think you have a lot to stand on with no, you going around I do because giving false promises. <laughs> this, this is karma <laughs> yeah. for everything I've been through. Oh, so come this on. is just my little Break revenge. Break the cycle. Break the cycle. This isn't even revenge. Is this not this even that using. deep? This is just yeah, but it's like for an eight pound drink. <laughs> then that's not gonna break them, is it? It's not gonna tear them to pieces. <laughs> yeah. So no. That doesn't balance out mm. 
everything my friends have been through, my family, and I mean women hmm. with men, so and myself, so no. <laughs> this is just <laughs> it's what the whole <laughs> An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. <laughs> Stick to your guns, though. I like it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what other tips and tricks do you have for these people coming to London? Um, what is a good age to come to London, you'd say? 18, 19, 16? Yeah, I, mean, I think maybe 16 would be a bit young. I don't know. Depends if you're moving with your family or... like If you're what? just moving by yourself. 16's a bit young to move out, don't you think? Uh, depends I mean, on I the guess girl. If they're moving out, then yeah, London would be a good place to come. Well, you don't know. Maybe they're doing their A-levels here. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, you, so, could, you start your A-levels at 16, don't you? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. A good age. I think any age is a good age to come to London. Okay. Because it's just so big and there's so many different things to do. So and I so many drinks to take. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's so many bars to go to where you can finesse people. The opportunities are endless, so... <laughs> <laughs> any age <laughs> you said that so proud like a fox <laughs> or a serpent <laughs> i am really proud of my finessing uh, hey i'm proud for you girl <laughs> yeah. all, all, all the more for you yeah it's it takes it takes you technique know, certain and level time. Of practice you gotta think it through i mean it comes naturally for me but you know when i explain my tactics i'm like there's actually a lot of thought that goes into this so mm. And yeah. do you have like a range of a drink that you'd get off a guy? Would you be like, would you get like a bottle of champagne, for example? Oh, no. No, see, I don't go overboard. Because then you're you locked gotta in. you got to test the limits. Okay? Yeah, so you're, like, or, or you're locked in. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to feel trapped. Like, I don't want to feel like I owe them anything, you know, other than conversation. Because mm. then it's a bit like dangerous. They don't leave you alone. So I normally just get double rum and coke. Okay. Or... If he, if, but what about if he's if so he you're up to the guy and say hey do you want to get me a drink and mm. he comes back with like i don't know like a 15 glass pound champagne or something like that no okay so he can never go on his own to the bar okay i have to go see this is see there is where the secret's coming out okay but, no but that's health and safety reasons I oh because you're worried guy, that he might spike yeah, it. yeah exactly ah. if this guy's gonna of course he's gonna want to buy me a drink if he's gonna go there and spike it <laughs> okay well maybe we should have said this in the beginning <laughs> yeah, yeah. to all these so you've people always got to go to the bar as well okay that's important and Otherwise. how often have you ever been spiked i don't think so but you know touch wood. Touch, the wood the floor is wood <laughs> so far no okay. i don't think so it's really scary, yeah. I, I don't let people go and get my drinks. I try and keep an eye on them all the time. And I, and I always have it in my hand. Would, so. you get a, would you get the fingernail thing done? What is that? When you dip it in and... Yeah, and it changes the nail, the change of the colour of your nail. But then you got to change... you got to get that done every time you get your nails done, no? I mean, if you're getting spiked every time, then yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, if, but... <laughs> I just... There are easier ways like you can get covers for your cups which have a hole for the straw there are other things i'd probably do that instead but no myself i would be too drunk to actually use the cover or so <laughs> what i don't understand is why don't why don't like clubs just give you the glass with like like a lockable yeah like a lid but with a straw that's true do you get what yeah, i mean yeah 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 because I think that's like the the easiest way yeah. of, of mining any issue. That's very true. So, okay. So you go with the guy now. Yeah, to the bar. To the bar. Mm. And you're saying rum and coke. And what happens if he's like, nah, girl, listen, you're getting a cocktail tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, then, you know, happy days for me. Okay. <laughs> then it's like I've hit the jackpot. Cause, okay. You know. And that buys him what? Like an extra two minutes? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just gets an extra like rub on the arm be like oh thank you okay and then you disappear into the <laughs> yeah, shadows yeah yeah but i you have to make it seem like you're really like you know happy about this like you know this never happens i'll be like oh my god you didn't have to okay thank you so much even though you know i basically forced you to buy me a drink okay <laughs> so if if he's like if he's like okay so i'm <clears throat> i'm thinking in my head okay so him come up him come up mm. and you're saying like hey blah 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 and then you he's like to you oh yeah sure sure uh, by the way, uh, do you want to buy? Do you want me to buy a round for shots for you and your friends? What happens then? Yeah, I say yeah, but then, but then How the good often thing has that with happened? that none, never. I will ask them sometimes. Can you buy this for my friend? If I only really if I'm with one friend, because it then it's rude. 
I don't want to just leave that one friend and then I get a free drink, you know? So I'll sure. be like, do you want to buy me my friend a drink? Sure. And they're normally like hesitant. <laughs> They'll like be like, oh, I've just got like finessed into <laughs> two right. drinks now. But they'll say yes because otherwise you know i'm leaving my friends leaving you get nothing okay <laughs> so. i mean i've 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 bought once for like half a bar jaeger bombs really that was that was very like strange <laughs> that was really strange once it was oh. strange seeing so many jaeger bombs on a plate yeah yeah that was weird the 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 more weirder thing was that people would just come up to me and give me like a hug or like oh a high God. five oh. and i was like i don't know who you are and you're little smellies <laughs> okay <laughs> <Back up>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um now no one's ever really offered though i don't think to buy us shots like, what a, what about taking you to the vip room yeah vip yeah that's happened yeah and you're like times. oh no i, I just want to stay on the dance floor no oh okay so okay so then you're <laughs> no, invested aren't you if it's vip yeah yeah okay uh, so if i'm but even then then they'll maybe get about 20 minutes of my time okay i will normally the thing is, when I'm drinking, I normally bounce around anyway. Sure. And I'll go, like, dance and then sit down, whatever. So if I'm with someone who brings me into VIP, yeah, I'll sit with them for a bit, have a couple drinks with them. And I'll be like, I've got to go and find my friends if my friends aren't with me. Or if I'm with my friends, I'll be like, let's go dance. Okay. And if you if yeah. if you say this, if you, okay, so let's, hypothetically, mm -hmm. he invites you to the VIP room. Yeah. Right? You, you, you you bring up your friends, you don't leave your friends, whatever. Mm. You disappear into the shadows again, right? Yeah. And you see him later with another bird on his lap. Are you okay with that? Or you go like, I'm, oh. I'm absolutely fine with that. I will not believe you. <laughs> I will not believe you. No, I, I normally like you. that. I like that because it means they're not going to be chasing me around the whole night. I don't believe you. <laughs> Why would you not believe me? I don't believe you. <laughs> Why? Why? Unless I really liked the guy. Yeah. If it was someone that I was actually like, oh, yeah, I like him. But then that, that would piss me off. But. but that's the thing, right? We always want something we can't have. No, because this has happened to me. Yeah. And I don't care. Because I move on and get another drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, like, Sorry, your 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 energy <laughs> is spent on drink, right? Because <laughs> because yeah, we had I had a good couple rounds sitting at your VIP table. Done. I okay. sat at VIP. Now, okay. like, I don't ever stay with one person the whole night anyway. Okay. Unless I'm literally only with that one person. Okay. Like I go there with one person. And so, and so you enjoy clubbing more than you enjoy bars. Nah, I prefer bars. And do you enjoy, have you been to a gay, gay, a gay club? A gay club? Yeah. No. I think you should definitely, go. you'll really enjoy it. Why? Because it's so much more cleaner than any normal <laughs> club. Like everyone smells nice. <laughs> there's no like BO, there's, yeah. everything's clean. It's amazing. Right. I. But you're worried I mean, that you might not be able to fleece any drinks. That's yeah, what your mean, worry is. That's one thing. Was I, I, I actually get hit on by girls quite often. Okay. So, like, when I've spoken to my friends about going to gay clubs, they're just like, yeah, but Jade, like, you're just going to get hit on the whole night. And I'm like, yeah, so it's a bit... So then go to, like, a gay club and not a lesbian club, bar. I'm sure there's, like, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there is bars more for dudes and Yeah, okay, bars but then I'd more never get a drink, would I? <laughs> you don't know. Maybe you find a bi guy. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Or he'll be like, darling, you're not fleecing me tonight. Yeah. <laughs> the, like, honey. the most sober you'll ever come back. I do want to go to a gay club. That does sound fun. I don't know. Yeah. I do. I prefer bars. I think, cause, yeah, I prefer the vibe. I think clubs just get a bit gross. A lot of sweaty people. Nowhere to really sit. I prefer having cocktails as well than double rum and cokes all night. Have you been to, uh, well, I'm trying to figure out what kind of places you could you could fleece. Mm. <laughs> yeah, please, please help me. <laughs> I, promoters are your best options because all the other ones I can think of are all more like dating scenes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then the really expensive one, they have like a really fucked up uh, uh, ratios. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've noticed that, huh? Yes, yeah. of course I have. It's like ninety percent girls. Mm -hmm. Or so, I went clubbing the other. So I went to tape. Mm -hmm. Ninety percent girls. Mm -hmm. And then I also went to cargo. Mm -hmm. Ninety percent guys. I was like, where is the balance? Because 
Ninety percent guys is just too much. Felt a bit like the ninety percent girls. None of them were talking. Like it wasn't even a type of place where like you could go in and make friends with a load of people. It was just girls sitting there taking selfies. Yeah, it's because they're wanting to be approached in order to yeah, call it a but night. But then no one gets approached because because the, the best one of the group lot of guys. Gets it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know. Do you know I... who Dan Benzari is? No, he, he's like this Instagram like guru, right? Who's always just like having sex with like twenty girls and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should check out his Instagram. Oh, You'll great. be like, yeah. oh my god, must do now. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is exactly his techniques, and he talks about how he would like put up clubs and stuff like that, and he'd only have like he his rule is one dude to <coughs> five girls, and whenever he'd host a party, he'd bring him like cold girls and stuff like that, nah. in order to fill that kind of. Uh, when I have line. a club, it's gonna be different. Mm. I don't think that's the right ratio. On, on that, on your right ratio, we have 1% of battery left. Well, so it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. And I hope you'd come on again. Yeah, to do my rap. <laughs> to do your rap. And you can talk us more about ways of fleecing people in the future. Yeah. And if you have a boyfriend by then and you stop fleecing, we'll be so disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> then my, you're in the long con. <laughs> yeah. My fleecing days will never be over. Even if I have a boyfriend, then I'll... I'll provide tips and tricks on how to finesse your boyfriends. There we go. You heard it here first. Yeah. Again, pleasure as always. And thank you thank so you. much for being on. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, anything you'd like to share, people? Sure. Anything you'd like to share? Uh, oh, me? Uh, on Instagram. Uh, do you want to share your uh, socials? Anything? I mean, I, I gave them my Instagram. Yeah? Yeah. Say it again. Jade.bell underscore. Okay, perfect. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. Thank well, that's you. it. Good night. Bye.